to and fro in the seven chambers there stalked in fact a multitude of dreams and these the dreams writhed in and about taking hue from the rooms and causing the wild music of the orchestra to seem as the echo of their steps and anon there strikes the ebony clock which stands in the hall of the velvet and then for a moment all is still and all is silent save the voice of the clock the dreams are stiff frozen as they stand but the echoes of the charm die away they have endured but an instant and a light half-subdued laughter floats after them as they depart and now again the music swells and the dreams live and writhe to and fro more merrily than ever taking hue from the many tinted windows through which stream the rays from the tripods but to the chamber which lies most westwardly of the seven there are now none of the maskers who venture for the night is waning away and there flows a ruddier light through the blood-colored panes and the blackness of the sable drapery appalls and to him whose foot falls upon the sable carpet there comes from the near clock of ebony a muffled peal more solemnly emphatic than any which reaches their ears who indulged in the more remote gaieties of the other apartments but these other apartments were densely crowded and in them beat feverishly the heart of life and the revel went whirlingly on until at length there commenced the sounding of midnight upon the clock and then the music ceased as i have told and the evolutions of the waltzers were quieted and there was an uneasy cessation of all things as before but now there were twelve strokes to be sounded by the bell of the clock and thus it happened perhaps that more of thought crept with more of time into the meditations of the thoughtful among those who reveled and thus too it happened perhaps that before the last echoes of the last chime had utterly sunk into silence there were many individuals in the crowd who had found leisure to become aware of the presence of a masked figure which had arrested the attention of no single individual before and the rumor of this new presence having spread itself whisperingly around there arose at length from the whole company a buzz or murmur expressive of disapprobation and surprise then finally of terror of horror and of disgust in an assembly of phantasms such as i have painted it may well be supposed that no ordinary appearance could have excited such sensation in truth the masquerade license of the night was nearly unlimited but the figure in question had out heroded herod and gone beyond the bounds of even the prince's indefinite decorum there are chords in the minds of the most reckless which cannot be touched without emotion even with the utterly lost to whom life and death are equally jests there are matters of which no jest can be made the whole company indeed seemed now deeply to feel that in the costume and bearing of the stranger neither wit nor propriety existed the figure was tall and gaunt and shrouded from head to foot in the habiliments of the grave the mask which concealed the visage was made so nearly to resemble the countenance of a stiffened corpse that the closest scrutiny must have had difficulty in detecting the cheat and yet all this might have been endured if not approved by the mad revellers around but the mummer had gone so far as to assume the type of the red death his vesture was dabbled in blood and his broad brow with all the features of the face was besprinkled 
with a scarlet horror.